Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to build the ADSB uh, receiver from the kit that you order online. I'm sure you've seen or on Reddit or whatever, or Facebook. So this is the base kit. Now I've already built mine, so that's why it's already out of the box. But basically, this is everything you need. If, if, if there's anything in the box that you don't need, just, just don't worry about it. Like There's a remote that comes with this thing. Just don't You don't need that. So this is all you need. You need the ADSB uh, USB dongle. You need the Raspberry Pi, which when you get it, it comes um, in two separate pieces. But I put it, went ahead and put it in the case, uh, and then I put the little Velcro on there. Uh, you need the antenna that comes with this thing. You need this comes with the battery pack, and this is what's going to power the uh, the Raspberry Pi. This is the battery pack. Now, if you'll notice, the battery pack, if you're getting the one from the Amazon kit, has two ports. This on top here, which if you can see is, um, I don't know if you can see, it says out two. That is a higher wattage than the out one, but it doesn't matter. You can use both for what we're going to do. We're, we are, just for clarity, we're going to do the single antenna build, not the dual that does the 1090. Uh, I have that one. I have another one here, and I have that. Uh, however, we're just going to not overcomplicate it, so we're going to do this. This is the Wi-Fi adapter. This is how your iPad will see the Stratus X once it is um, once it is up and running. So you need this, and this is the uh, the hard drive or the the memory for the uh, Stratus X, and that's how it's actually going to uh, to uh, uh, run. So what we're going to do now is we are going to put it all together. So let me. Okay set that right there so we can do this here so we're going to take the raspberry pi in a little case and all we're going to do is we're going to put that in there we're going to put that here where it sticks out like that and then um like i said i've already put the velcro on mine so you just can velcro it together like that and you will hook that like that and that like that. Now you'll notice it powers on, but there's no hard drive, so it doesn't do anything. So you just turn it back off. This is the antenna. This is the antenna for this. And so what you're going to do, this will go in here like that. And then I've got a little Velcro on here. And then whammo, that's the kit. Now that's pretty much all you have to do. So now, but you got to program it or it doesn't do anything. So what we're going to do, you're going to take this thing that comes with it, this is an adapter, this doesn't really, this is nothing but an adapter, and you're going to take the memory card, which is this little thing, and you're going to put this in there, and what that does is, that allows this thing to go into your computer. Now, I have, most laptops have Pro, so it's going to have it all already built in, but let's see, so what you're going to do, I'm hook this thing up here. Let's see. Okay, and I've got Windows 10 running on my MacBook Pro, so uh, I've already loaded this, so that's why this pops up. So just close that. Now, this is the Reddit thread that you probably got your parts list off of. So what you want to do is you want to go to the other Reddit thread. This is part two, and part two is going to have a link to a program called Win32 Disk Imager, and you want to download and install that. If you're on a Mac, you'll you'll download the Pi Filler, but we don't. We're on a PC, even though this is a MacBook. Now you want to click on here where it says Download Pre-Configured Images, which take you here. And even though I'm running this one, don't don't do that one. Do do the latest stable if you're if you're not familiar with this. So you just want to download this right here. You just click on that, and that will download it. Now I've already pre-downloaded it, so I'm not going to wait. But basically, what you want to do is once it's downloaded and extracted, um, all you're going to do, let me um, let me cancel this download so don't confuse anybody. So all you're going to do is open up your WinDisk32 program that you install from here. You're going to select the little blue here, and you're going to pick the extracted folder for the zip file, which is right there, and you're going to pick that image file there. So there you go. And it's going to say write to E, which that's the drive we just inserted, which is right here. And then you're just going to say write. And this thing will write 
and it will it'll it'll take probably 10 or 15 minutes to write depending on what it is and then all you want to do then you want to make sure that you eject it so you go here eject there you go and then you just take it out put this back around and then all you got to do then is take it out of the adapter you just pull it out and take your Raspberry Pi here and put it back off the Velcro. It's easier to manage. And then the little slot for the hard drive adapter is right there. So you want to make sure that you get it just like that. And you want to be very careful that you slide it like that. Then you're going to click it. I don't know if you can hear it click. And that means it is locked in place. Now the hard drive is secure in the unit. So all you got to do now put this back together here real quick and then just plug it in and that will do it once you get it plugged in it boots back up and that's it and you'll see it boot all the way and that's it. You just look at your uh, four flight, or your, actually you look at your iPad and you'll go to the Wi-Fi and you just pick Stratus as the Wi-Fi. This is the new build or the, the beta build. So the beta build, um, if, you if you're connected to it, it won't actually um, basically Shanghai your data connection so you can still use the, uh, the, the uh, cellular. Um, and it also has a web interface where you can see the um, the uh, traffic on it to see if it gets any intent, any um, any signal. Now, one of the cool things is if you order another one, which is what I have here, and the reason I have an adapter on it is because the Raspberry Pi is not fat enough. Uh, the USB ports aren't spaced up enough apart that they will hit each other. So you'll see you can't really put two on there because they'll bang into each other. So you have to order this little adapter thing with it and you just snap it on. Now some people you'll see have taken this thing off. I just haven't done it yet because uh, I haven't made a case. So you just snap that in there and do that. Now you've got two and you're like, well, why in the world do you have two? Well, if you run this with the new build, the newest build, that's a beta build, you'll get 1090 traffic in addition to the normal 900 traffic and what that means is <clears throat> this is more airliners that are over 18,000 feet in fact I can sit in my house and get 1090 traffic and see the airliners usually it, you'll see it on the four flight it'll say like 32 uh, 32 324 plus and that means it's 32,000 feet above me so um, plus you get better weather and stuff like that so really really this is not going to be used in GA I mean I would be very careful about don't get complacent uh, when you use this. It's great to have, but you remember most of the GA traffic, most of the fleet is not ADSB out right now. So you always want to keep your eyes and ears or your eyes uh, outside the cockpit at all times to make sure that you're uh, doing traffic avoidance. But what it is great for is weather because if you're, especially where I'm at in the southeast, if you, you know, take off for a long cross country that's an hour uh, you know your hour or two flight the weather may be completely different than when you uh, looked up the weather on the ground so this is kind of nice to know that if you're in route somewhere and all of a sudden a storm comes up especially if you're flying towards the coast or flying towards the mountains and all of a sudden the storm comes up you can see it before you fly into it or before you get into a situation where you can't divert or uh, you, you you're having to land in some weird place so that's why it's great to have. I love the traffic. Uh, or I mean, I love the weather on this. Traffic's nice, but until 2020, you're always going to have uh, people that, that, I mean, they don't have ADSB installed, so it doesn't no good. So anyway, that's the quick down and dirty. It takes about 15 minutes, start to finish. That's from opening the box to being done. Uh, the product's just going to keep getting better and better. I can't wait. You know, there was a, an article on EAA Today about it, uh, EAA's website. So it's just going to get more and more traction. Um, I cannot wait to find a 3D printer and print out a 3D case for it. 
uh, so it's <clears throat> a little less cumbersome and it won't get all crushed and stuff and as soon as I can I'm going to install this permanently that's why I haven't that's why I haven't um, done anything where this is permanently assembled because this is going to go in my Cherokee uh, if you follow the blog it's this old Cherokee.com and this is I'm going to mount this in the Cherokee hopefully this weekend and find a place um, don't forget because a lot of people have like me have stuck velcro on the bottom of this thing which I did not know until after the fact that these things are magnetic so if you have a, a metal plate or something like that I'm gonna go take this this weekend and stick it on the Cherokee and see uh, see if it will stick up above the door uh, so we'll see I don't know if it's aluminum it may not stick so anyway um, that's pretty much it so keep watching the uh, the uh, Reddit and they'll be releasing new builds as often as they can and every every day the the product is changing uh, especially when you chat with a developer uh, he's a great guy so um, it's great so good luck <laughs>